making the Stuart Model Steam Plant Part 32. Further work on the special mounting base which will collect any condensate and oil from underneath the engine. The video's a bit late today because my grandson arrived with a broken lightsaber. I've got my old AVO meter out and I've been resoldering connections but it's still not working. And now that it's doing nothing more than charging up I can get on with editing the video. I made the embryo of the mounting base in the last episode and for about a millisecond I did think that I could get away with screwing a fitting into the wood in the end of it. And here I'm cutting a suitable thread in the end which is 5 16 by 32 threads per inch to take this union. But alas, I am not happy with it, there is a much better method. The last thing I want to happen is for this mahogany base to become soaked with oil over time. And for that reason I'm going to pipe away any condensate and oil residue left by the engine. And to complete this job I'm actually going to make a special shaped pipe that pushes into the base in order to drain the centre area of the mounting base. You've just been watching me removing the engine from the old softwood base. And here it is, very oily and the wood is split. This is no good at all, but I'm going to hang on to it because it's useful to fasten the engine to, if ever the engine's removed from the plant for servicing. When working on the engine, you do need a base because the diameter of the flywheel is just a tiny bit too big, and because of that, it's very easy to bend the crankshaft. I've seen it many times on these double tens. Here I'm marking the positions for the bolts using this very useful deep hole marker. And now I'm drilling the holes all the way through the piece of mahogany to take some bolts. Originally the mounting lugs in the engine were designed to take 5 BA bolts, but I've drilled them out so I can use 4 BA bolts the next size up which are much stronger. And it just so happens I have some quite long 4 BA bolts that will be perfect for this job. I intend to thread the hardwood 4 BA. So I'm using a 1 8 of an inch diameter twist drill to drill the hole's tapping size. After cleaning away all of the dust, it's time to thread the holes. For this I'm of course using a 4BA tap, and I'm threading the holes until the tap comes through the other side. A hardwood like mahogany will accept a thread quite well, and you would be surprised how strong the thread is. The bolts I'm going to use will go nearly all the way through the mahogany, they're quite long. At this stage I haven't finished the base, so it's pointless screwing the engine tightly down onto the base. After threading the first two holes successfully, everything fits together, so now I'm threading the other two. I'm going to run this section at double speed, because this job takes quite a while. I end up with four very clean threads through the mahogany base. And this clip shows the length of the four BA bolts that I'm going to use. The next part of the job is to reduce the thickness of the base slightly, and to do this I'm using my 4 inch belt sander. But I need to make sure it's perfectly level, so once I reduce the thickness I use my micrometer to check this. The micrometer tells me that this part is slightly too thick. So I marked the area with a felt tip pen, then went back to the belt sander and removed a tiny bit more. And soon the thickness of the base was the same wherever I put the micrometer. And now the piping lines up perfectly with the condenser oil trap. To indicate this I'm using a piece of brass bar, and it's perfectly level. I will be making a special adapter connector, because the fittings on the condenser are for quarter inch pipe, and I want to use quarter inch pipe, but to keep things looking good, I've used a 5 16 by 32 adapter on the exhaust manifold end. That's because a 3 8 by 32 union nut would look very overscale in this position. The next thing I need to do is drill four holes in the piece of mahogany and countersink the holes to take four wood screws to screw the base down onto the main baseboard. Once I've marked out the piece of wood, badly as usual, I drilled four holes, all in the correct place in the end. And once I've finished the drilling operation, I countersunk each of the holes. I made sure that the holes were in such a position that they would not get in the way of the mounting of the engine, because I need to use a gasket when I fit the engine to this mounting base. Here I'm giving the wooden base a bit of a rub down, mainly to deburr the holes. Originally I thought this part would look okay left in plain mahogany, polished up a little bit, but I'm not going to do that, I've had a change of mind. 
I'm actually going to paint it black when I finish it, but not just yet. What I'm doing here is drilling a hole 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter all the way through into the conical area in the middle and partially through into the other side. And with the help of my bandsaw and some needle files, I'm making a specially shaped piece of tube. And when the tube is pushed into position, it will be something like this, although the camera angle is distorting it, it's quite straight. I marked the length of the piece of tube, removed it with a pair of pliers and cut the tube to the correct length. This clip shows a commercial 5 16 by 32 threads per inch union fitted into the three jaw chuck of my Boxford lathe. Just as an example, I held this by the threads very gently and took light cuts. Normally I would screw the fitting into a union nut, but you can do it this way, you just have to be a little bit more careful. It's important not to make this fitting too tight to fit in the piece of pipe. If the fitting's too tight, when I silver solder it, the silver solder will not be able to run down between the fitting and the pipe. This clip shows the pipe and the fitting after silver soldering. Before pushing the pipe into position in the mounting base, I'm fitting a union nut over the threads to protect them. This clip shows the completed assembly pressed into position. But I haven't finished yet, I need to fully waterproof this conical area in the middle. And using a really old paintbrush, I gave the entire area a generous covering of 5 minute epoxy. When the epoxy resin has cured, this area will be extremely waterproof. I intend to paint this base the same colour black that the metal base is painted. Because this is now much more than just a mounting base for an engine, I think it should look like it's part of the engine. So when I paint it, I will use Stuart black paint. I thought I would tidy up the solder around the bottom part of the condenser because I wasn't happy with it. And here you see, apart from one or two small blobs, it's a lot better. In this clip I was a bit puzzled why the nut spinner rolled into view. And as I didn't move it, I can only assume it's some sort of a poltergeist in my workshop. Or maybe it's just a vibration from me filing the condenser. I don't think I need to book an exorcist any time soon. That's it for this one. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.